and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you five ways to remove anything from a photo in GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that don't forget to check out my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of video tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and open source help articles so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Diving in here, here's one photo we'll be working with. Here is another photo we'll be working with. So coming back to the original photo, I'm going to open this up. So I'll go to File, Open Recent. And here is the original. I'm going to convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space. And some of your minds might have been blown just now. Yes, there is a guy playing guitar in this original photo. And he's got a long shadow he's casting here. So this was the final result. Here was another iteration of that. And here is the original photo we'll be working with. So the first technique for today's tutorial is going to require a third-party plugin. It's totally free. It's easy to download. I do have a tutorial on how to download this plugin. It's called the Resynthesizer plugin. A lot of you may be familiar with this plugin already, but this plugin is best used for removing larger objects from your photos, such as this one. So once you have the plugin installed, all you need to do is come over here to your free select tool or really any select tool for that matter. I'll hold control and zoom in. And over here in my tool options, you guys might have your tool options down here, but inside my tool options, I'll make sure the mode is set to add to the current selection, or you could just do replace the current selection if you prefer. And we're working directly on the image layer for this. So what I'll do is I'll loosely draw around my subject. I do want to try to stay pretty close to the subject here. And I'm going to skip the shadow for now. And I'll come up here. We're going to erase inside this portion. And we'll come back around and connect. So I'll hit the enter key and that will apply my selection area using the free select tool. I'll hold control and zoom in. If you do have this set to the mode of add to the current selection, that's going to be best for this next part. So if you want, you can get closer to the subject here with the select tool. I'm going to hold the control key. That's going to enter into the subtract from current selection mode. So now we can just subtract any areas we think maybe go too far out. This isn't entirely necessary. Hold the control key. We're just subtracting and I'll hit the enter key. And I'll do one more here. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. Hold control, zoom out. So once you have sufficiently selected your subject, next we're going to actually use the resynthesizer plugin here. So to do that, I'll go to filters, enhance. And if you've installed the resynthesizer plugin properly, right here is one of the features, heal selection. So this will only be here if you have that resynthesizer plugin downloaded. So I'll click on that. That's going to bring up this little Python foo hill selection dialog. So I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool. I'm not going to go through this in depth, but basically we're just choosing how many pixels we want to grab from around the selection area we drew. We're sampling from all around, so everywhere, not just the sides or the top or bottom, which is the other two options. And the filling order will keep set to random, and I'll click OK. There you can see that has erased that object there pretty quickly from our photo. I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. So of course this isn't perfect and I'm going to show you how to clean this up using some of the other techniques. And we also haven't gotten rid of the shadow which once again will be another technique. So the second technique for erasing anything from a photo in GIMP is going to be using the heal and clone tools. So these tools are better for things like spot healing. So you want to heal a smaller area of your photo or get rid of something like a speck of dust on your camera lens that showed up in the final photo. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to the heal tool, which does also go over briefly the clone tool. But in this particular case, I'll hold control and zoom in. So it can be useful to use the heal and clone tools to clean up areas like this. So I'll hit the H key to grab my heal tool. And the heal tool is going to use an algorithm in order to take pixels from one area and paint them on the final area, your destination area. 
So I'm going to increase the size of my paintbrush here using the right bracket on my keyboard. Hold the control key and click. So that's gonna grab an area of pixels. That's the source area. And now we can paint on our destination area. And you'll see what the heel tool is gonna to do is it's just going to blend the areas from the source area with the destination area and help us get a better result there. I do have my alignment set to none, by the way. And I'll come down here, hold control, click to grab a source area. So if I do lift up my mouse, I will have to grab a new source area. So hold control, click. And you can see that is blending the seams. And the other name for the heel tool is seamless cloning because it does help to blend seams, as opposed to the clone tool, which tends to create seams. So hold control and zoom in. This is where the clone tool is going to come in handy. So if I hit the C key on my keyboard, that'll grab my clone tool. It's similar to the heel tool, except it's not blending pixels from the surrounding areas. It's not using an algorithm. It's just directly copying the pixels from inside the source area. And that comes in handy when you get closer to areas like this, where you have two pixel areas that are totally different. So we don't want the colors from this blending into this area because then it starts to look smudged. So the clone tool helps us out with that. I'll hold control and zoom out. So that's done a pretty good job of getting rid of that. And I could continue on with this area here, but I'm actually going to skip it. That brings us to the third technique for removing anything from a photo in GIMP, and that is going to be using a selection tool along with a layer mask. And I'm gonna scroll down here to the lower portion of my photo. So now we're gonna use this technique on the shadow that's right here. That being said, this technique is better for landscape areas of photos. So in other words, there's not a huge difference between what's going on in this area and what's going on in this area. So landscape areas that are also fairly homogenous as opposed to up here where you have quite a bit of differences in the landscape. So this technique won't work as well up here. So down here where things are pretty similar, we can use this third technique. So I'll hit the F key to grab my free select tool again. So I'm going to try to outline as closely to the pebbles here, this little pebble mound or rock mound, whatever you want to call it. But real quick, I just want to turn on the feather edges option and we'll keep the radius set to 10. That'll help the result blend better here so there won't be as noticeable of a seam. But now using our free select tool, we're just going to trace around the rock area. So hold control, use my mouse wheel to zoom out a bit. All right, once we've connected those two points, we'll hit the enter key to apply that. Once we've done that, I'm gonna come over here and duplicate my image layer. So now we have two of these and a whole control zoom out a bit. So next what I wanna do is hit the M key to grab my move tool. So we're on the top copy layer and I'm going to click and drag this layer over to the right while holding the control key, that's gonna ensure this drags in straight line mode and I'll release. So here you can see what's going on. We are moving this rock area to the right inside of the selection area and that's going to allow us to cover up what's happening here, the shadow part. And I'm actually gonna move this back to the right slightly. So we're gonna move this as little as humanly possible. It's okay that there's a little sliver down here in the corner. So I'll hold control, zoom out. So now what I'm gonna do is come over here to this layer, right click, go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask two, I'll choose selection and click add. And there you can see that's added this little rock area here. I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. And that's done a pretty good job of getting rid of the shadow that was on the original layer. So hold control zoom in. Of course, there's some areas that aren't completely perfect such as this area here that's kind of dipping now. What we can do to fix that is come back over here to the layer as opposed to being on the layer mask. And we'll hit the C key on the keyboard to grab the clone tool. Then I'm going to hold control and click. So that'll grab an area just off here to the left hand side of this little dip area. And then we can just paint. And let me hold control click. So we can paint some of that back in. And you do have to remember that there's a layer mask covering up this part, so that's why we can't really see what's going on here. The whole control click. We're still going to try to draw this area in. 
So if I come over here to the layer mask, I'll hit the P key to grab my paintbrush, reset this to black and white, hit the X key to switch over to white, and now I can simply paint on my layer mask, and you'll see, let me hit the X key to switch back. We can paint this back in using black. So now you can see we've done a pretty good job of getting rid of that little dip. I'll hold control, zoom out. And I'll hold control, zoom in. Remember there is a little sliver of black somewhere down here. So let's hide this. So it's right here. So let's come back up here to my original layer. So we're off the layer mask. We'll hit the H key to grab the heel tool. In this case, because we are close to the edge, if I use the heel tool and paint on the edge, it's going to paint transparency. We don't want that happening. So all we have to do is click on our layer and then click this little alpha channel lock. That'll ensure that this doesn't start painting transparency on our layer. So then I'll hold the control key, click, and we can paint with the heel tool near the edge here, and that'll get rid of that little black spot. So moving on to technique number four, we're gonna get into a bit more advanced stuff now. I'm going to now decompose my image into the red, green, and blue color channels, and then recompose the image once I have erased the objects I wanna erase from my image. So for starters, I'm just gonna put everything on the same layer. So to do that, I'll right click on here, go to apply layer mask, and then I'll click the merge down icon here in the layers panel. That puts everything on the same layer. Next, I'm gonna make sure the layer is the same size as the overall canvas size. So I'll go to layer, layer to image size. So obviously we've erased pretty much everything in this photo already, but if I wanted to make more finite adjustments to this, I can do so by going to colors, components, decompose. So I'll make sure the color model is set to RGB and I'll click okay. So if I hold control and zoom in, you'll see, we can still see some slight irregularities here in the consistency of the color of the sky. And what Decompose has done is it's taken the red, green, and blue color channels, put them all on a grayscale layer and separated them. So if I come over here to my color channels, we have gray and alpha. And let's come back over here to the layers panel. This allows us to edit the very minute differences in colors that may have resulted from using the previous techniques. So essentially this allows us to tidy things up a bit more. And this can be useful because the irregularities can differ based on what color channel you're on. So if I come over here, hide the red channel, you can see the green channel doesn't have as much imperfections in the sky. And if we hide both the red and green channel, we have just the blue channel where once again, you can see the imperfections aren't quite the same there. So let's come back over here and unhide all these layers. Click on the red layer. Hit the H key on my keyboard, hold control, zoom in. So I'm just going to use the heel tool here to get rid of these imperfections. So I'm gonna hold the control key and click. And here you can see we're getting rid of these seams. So because we're only working on the red color channel, this is only going to be blending colors from that color channel as opposed to blending all the colors from across the entire image. And now let's hide the red channel. We'll come back here to the green channel and we'll do the same thing until these imperfections have disappeared. Finally, let's hide the green channel. Come over here to the blue channel. Make sure you're clicked on it. So this one's much more faint. If you wanted to, you could decrease the opacity of this tool if you wanted there to be less of an effect used here, so you want the effect to be more subtle. And I'll hold control, zoom out, and I'll come over here, shift click on the show hide icon, so now you can see those very minor imperfections that occurred are now gone. And we can come back up here to colors, components, recompose. And if I come back over here to the original composition, you can see now the sky looks a lot more smooth. So control Z, that's before. Control Y, that's after. The final technique for this tutorial on how to remove anything from a photo in GIMP is going to be the wavelet decompose method. So for this method, let's come back here to this image. And this image actually already has all the adjustments made to it. So let's open up the original file, open recent, and here is the original photo. I'll hit convert. 
Hold control zoom in so I've removed the blemishes from his face as well as some of the wrinkles. So that's what this technique is best at. It's best at removing those finer details, those finer imperfections, blemishes, wrinkles, etc. from a photo. And it does so by separating various layers of details from your photo. So let me show you this tool in action. This is directly built into GIMP, so we'll go to Filters, Enhance, Wavelet Decompose. If you're a beginner, I recommend going with three scales. If you're intermediate, you can go five, and if you're an expert, you can go with seven. But let's stick with three for this tutorial, and I'll click OK. So what this has done is it's separated various layers of detail from the image, and we can see that over here under the Decomposition Layer Group. And if I hide the residual layer, which is essentially the composited layer or the final image, you can see what this has done here. And if you've ever used the high pass filter, you know this is pretty similar to what the high pass filter does. It's separating the details from the layer by using contrast around the edges of those details. And here we have scale one, two, and three. So if I hide scale three and two, you'll see scale one contains the finer details of the image. Scale 2 contains sort of the medium details, and then Scale 3 is going to be the larger details. When you combine these, you get the fully constructed map here of all of the details. As I mentioned, you can get rid of things like wrinkles, etc. using this. So with the Heal tool, I'm going to decrease the size of my brush, and I'm going to come over here and unhide the residual layer. So another benefit of this technique is you can see what you're doing directly on the image as you're doing it. So if I hold Control and click, I'm working on scale 3 because the wrinkle is considered a larger detail. If I use my heel tool and paint on this, you can see that's going to help reduce the appearance of that wrinkle. So if I shift click, that's before, shift click, that's after. If I wanted to remove more of this wrinkle, I could come up to the scale 2 layer and we can do the same thing and you'll see that that will start to erase the finer portions of this wrinkle. And by the way, make sure your sample merged option is turned off when you're doing this. Otherwise, it's going to take pixels from all the layers below, whereas we just want to take pixels from the layer we're on. So I think we've sufficiently removed that wrinkle. Let's say we want to remove some of this other stuff here. So hold control, zoom in. If I wanted to just remove the discoloration that's occurring here around this blemish, I can come over here to the residual layer, hold control and click decrease the size of this, and now when I paint on here, you'll see it's going to help smooth out the skin tones, make them more even looking, but it's going to keep that texture so that can help that look more realistic. But if you wanted to also get rid of the texture, of course, you can come back to the scale layers using the heal tool, and that'll help get rid of some of that. And you can move up to the scale two layer and do the same thing. And let's come back to the residual layer. We can also work on making this part of the skin look a bit more even, like so. Hold control, zoom out. So come down here, shift click. There's the original. And let's grab the move tool. Shift click. There is the final result there. I only did some minor tweakings to this photo. But you can see that's a great way to remove smaller imperfections while also keeping the texture from the original image. That's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You could check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.